much for staying here, for sharing with, with this community, and go ahead. Awesome. All right, so let's get right into it. So folks, thanks for joining us. For the next hour, we're going to help you take your meetings to a whole new level. So stick around. If you're a presenter, if you're an attendee even, just stick around and we're going to share a tip or two on how you can use Microsoft Teams meetings and you can level up. So let's get right into it. For this, I'm going to invite my colleague, Hugo. Hey, everybody. Um, let's get started. All right, so our session is called uh, Microsoft Teams from Zero to Hero. And again, today we're going to show you how to use the Teams features to maximize your productivity in meetings and really become a hero. My name is Hugo Bernier. I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft, and I can be reached uh, via Twitter or LinkedIn. And with me today, I couldn't do it without my awesome uh, team <laughs> DJ, uh, Denzel. Denzel? Hey, I'm your teaminator. Uh, I love Microsoft Teams. I love making it engaging. I help customers around the world adopt Teams from crawl, walk to run, jump, and fly. So happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, before we get started, I'd like to thank our, our sponsors, right? They, uh, they made this event possible. So thank you for, for the sponsors, and uh, we're really grateful. I hope the next time we'll be able to actually do this in person. All right. That would let's, be fun. <laughs> let's get started with the problems, right? So we, we, if you think about it, with last year, right, or la is it a year now? Is it two years, right, with COVID <laughs> and having to uh, work from home, um, a lot of us were thrown into uh, doing all day online meetings, right? We're using Teams or Zoom or anything like that. Obviously, we hope that it was done for, through Teams, but here's the problem is that online meetings are hard, right? All of us have, have suffered through this for the last little while, and there's a problem with that, right? So what's the difference between online meetings and being in person? And why are online meetings so hard? And more importantly, how can we kind of make changes that will help make these meetings uh, more engaging and more awesome. So, well, the first thing is that online meetings, you have fewer visual cues, right? Even if you're using your camera, right? You have, you still have a fewer visual cues from others' body language. Um, you know, such cues might still be hard, harder to, to got, engage because, you know, when you're in person, like let's say I want to, uh, Denzel wants to interrupt me, Right, and we're in person. He can actually just motion. He can stand up. He can he can step in front, right, to say, "Hey, I'd like to add something." But if all our cameras are off, uh, there's no way for me to know that Denzel wants to say something. Um, you know, we can't even read the audience. Like we can't tell whether the audience is engaged, whether everybody's asleep. You know, and that's that's very disconnecting. It's very disconcerting. At the same time, there's distractions happening, right? We are all working from home, so we all have to deal with things that we didn't have to deal with before, like things like children and spouses and dogs barking and neighbors mowing their lawn, right? They're all distractions for you, but also distractions for the attendees. This is an actual picture of my children uh, when I don't look uh, you know, at them for like more than five minutes. This is the kind of thing that happens. Along with... Uh, distractions, there's disengagement, right? It's so easy for any participant, including you, right, to to easily become detached from the meeting and just get distracted by other things, right? I know I'll go in meetings and then all of a sudden I'll start watching, checking my mail and answering my mail and I'll go down into like a, uh, you know, start surfing for, for answers and stuff like that. And next thing you know, I'm not paying attention to the meet, to the meeting. And I wouldn't be able to do that in person because, well, it would probably be rude, right? It would be uh, visually rude for me to not pay attention. So, and that's, that's even worse if your role in a meeting is a passive role. Like if you're expected to be speaking or participating, you know, then you'll probably pay attention. But if you're just supposed to be there just to be a fly on the wall, uh, it's really, really hard to stay engaged. And not only that, but the, that spontaneous engagement, right? The ability to get into a conversation uh, just so quickly in a meeting, 
Um, it's a lot more difficult for virtual participants than when people are sitting in a room. Like if Denzel and I want to start talking about something, uh, about an issue we've experienced with teams or something like that, we can just have a side chat in, in a real in-person meeting, but we can't do that in an online meeting because everyone's kind of part of that conversation. And then, you know, to add to problems that we're dealing with, there's technology glitches, right? This is, is usually something that goes wrong. How about and then that the present echo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Echo sucks. Echo sucks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is he, so you know, you presenters need to adapt. Like they need to adjust. Oh, okay, you're on mute. Your camera's not working. Whatever, whatever. Right? We don't have to do that in person. Um, and then, you know, to top it all off, because we've had that change between being in person to being online, there's still that kind of cultural breakdown. Right? The all the participants uh, have different communication styles, a different expectation of how the meeting should be run, and they may find it hard to difficult. I uh, hard to difficult, hard to contribute. I I know I have a, a problem with understanding where my place is in a meeting to contribute. So I'll either go one extreme or the other. I'll take over the meeting, or I'll be super quiet. Right? I'll rarely go halfway because again, I, I don't necessarily understand what my place is and that's not unique to me. And all this stuff leads to meeting fatigue. Um, you know, we say, oh my God, I've been in meetings all day and I've been on, you know, either on camera all day or on, on virtual meetings all day and I'm exhausted from being online. And then this is the worst part is that we'll go home or we'll go, we'll retire from, from work and then we're actually going to go online again. We're going to go on YouTube and, you know, uh, Instagram and, you know, now I'm showing how not cool I am because I can't remember any of those, those social media. Uh, but anyways, so we'll go online. So it's, it's not about being online that's exhausting. There is something there, right? It's that disconnect. It's kind of like constantly talking to someone who's not looking at you, who's not, who's not talking to you directly and, and having that weird disconnect feeling on edge the whole time. Now, luckily, just like social media can be entertaining and can keep you scrolling, there's a way that you can make teams more engaging. And that's really what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some of those tips to make teams more engaging. Let's talk about some of the solutions. And by the way, uh, if any of you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post uh, questions on the, on the chat. Always happy to answer them. Uh, if not, we will continue. So let's talk about the life cycle of a meeting, right? The first thing that happens is you need to join a meeting, right? And I don't know, like joining a meeting as a participant to start with, but then we'll talk also about joining a meeting as, um, as a presenter, because there's two different types of things. Um, you know, the one thing that I see all the time uh, with people joining a meeting is they'll join in there like in the middle of like a, uh, what sounds like a busy restaurant with people banging pots and pans and their uh, their microphone is on and things like that. Uh, Denzel, what would you say is the best way to join a meeting? Uh, well, would you want the attendee or the presenter? Yes, let's start with the attendee. So. So attendees should know that Microsoft strives to minimize disruption. So if you are the fourth or later person joining a meeting, your mic is automatically on mute. However, you could take some precautions just in case you are the first or second. So Teams does have noise suppression technology, and we could show that later on as we go through some of the features. So I encourage you to turn that on. And what that does is if your mic is on and there are background sounds like the like the door banging or the kids talking or your neighbor doing the lawn <laughs> at the time of the day you're, you're you're lucky to focus you could turn that on and what that does is it it prevents that sound going to the presenter who may be distracted at that time so that's what you could do as an attendee so what about as a, as presenter? a presenter yeah so as a presenter i i just go and give you an example if being a presenter is like hosting a party at home, like your kid's birthday, or it, it, it could even be an event. You're turning 40, 43, uh, it's my age, just gave that out. But you know, if that does happen, 
would you expect everyone to show up and you're not there? <laughs> so why don't you join your meeting five minutes ahead of everyone? This actually helps with get rid of any anxiety being a presenter. You know, everyone gets butterflies. I'll put my hands up. Uh, I also get butterflies for every event I do, but that's good because you're excited and, and you're and you want to do a good job right here. So joining that meeting maybe five minutes ahead of time, let's two things happen. It gives the attendees the awareness that the meeting is starting, right? At the same time, you could chat ahead of the meeting and say, hey guys, I'm starting five minutes ahead of time. If you can make it sooner, let's just have some lobby going. Also as a presenter, if you join uh, the meeting, why don't you just share a screen and play some YouTube jazz music and include that sound? And we'll show how you can do that as well, right? This livens things up. This makes it feel much like in person where we were in the office and we had the office radio going and, and give you that similar digital vibe in, in, in this new world of working. It's about breaking the ice, right? It's making it easy totally. instead of having that awkward silence. Uh, so another way to kind of break that awkward silence is to encourage interaction. Um, so what are some of the things that you could do with, uh, you know, uh, encouraging in interaction in a meeting as the as the meeting owner? I'd love uh, meeting interactions to start off with the host encouraging the adoption of using chat and using sentiment. So why don't you perhaps start your meeting and ask everybody how they're doing and rather than then have them communicate that, tell them to drop a GIF. This lets you know if they're comfortable using the chat, but you could later encourage them to use and post the question. So perhaps everyone just drop a GIF. I wish we could do that in live events. Drop a GIF, how are you feeling today? So that's one way to, for people to just liven up and ensure some participation. Uh, participation. The key moment uh, of every meeting or even a birthday party is the first five minutes you walk in. You know if you're going to be here forever <laughs> or if you're going to spend the night or if you're just going to bounce in like 10 minutes. So setting that tone is important in the beginning of your thing. So those are some ways I use that as well. In addition, we'll show how you can use polls and, and quizzes just to keep things liven up. How was your day or what, what, what are you looking to get out of this meeting? This allows the presenter to be a little bit in advance proactive to what they could do, and it can alter their presentation based on those pre questions. So chat ahead, uh, share your screen, uh, play some cool YouTube jazz music if you like that. Um, add a poll, uh, start a quiz, and have them drop a GIF. Another thing that I do when uh, when people join the call, uh, if they join with their camera on, I will actually call them out explicitly and say, thank you, Denzel, for joining with your camera on. Um, it usually does a couple things. One is the person that has their camera on will probably go, oh, I guess I'm keeping my camera on, right? <laughs> but the other thing that it does often is the other participants turn on their camera because I've already set the expectation that I would like for them or I appreciate them turning on their camera. Personally, I'm autistic. Uh, I I do need that, that interaction, the ability to see other people's uh, faces, to be able to uh, judge from, from their reaction, you know, how they're feeling. Because from their voice, I can't tell whether they're, you know, super annoyed with me or they're super happy, uh, which leads me to do some embarrassing stuff. There's right. one exception to that rule, Hugo. Yeah. Unless you sound like Morgan Freeman, <laughs> you could just <laughs> probably disappear from your meeting and just, you know, give that podcast like effect. So that's right. I'm not sure we all have that in us, but you know, I do believe that yes, turning on your camera is perhaps that way of you know just think about the movies too when you meet you meet outside in person but when you watch that movie you're together side by side so it's not like you're always looking at each other in that way great tip in fact um it's almost like you and i rehearsed this and uh because the next thing is about commanding attention right so if everyone has their cameras on at one point it becomes difficult for you to command attention hey look at me i'm the one presenting so um you know there are some ways that we can actually help uh, command attention, and it really depends on the type of meeting. Like if this is a meeting where I'm trying to present something and it's super important that everyone in the audience 
listens to me because I want them to walk away with a change in behavior, right? That's what the communicate is, is, is to convey a message that results in a change in behavior. So I really want people to be focused on me. But if it's a social thing or it's just a team, you know, a uh, regular team meeting, then it's probably a good idea for everyone to have the cameras on. Uh, and we'll talk about other ways where it's kind of hybrid, where sometimes we're turning off the camera, sometimes we're turning on the camera. But there's, what are the some of the, the things that that we can do, like uh, Denzel to command attention? Because like, there's chat so, and cameras and people not Yeah, so, so there's one thing I've noticed, you know, people need to kind of just develop maybe some dexterity in using, which is a meeting option. You know, if you want to level this up, you would want to definitely Look, take a look at uh, the use of meeting options while you're in the meeting. And here are some tactics that I do. Did you know that you can actually block the chat so that way, you know, people don't chat in a meeting? And how do you do that? You will demonstrate that as we go through some options later. You will click your meeting options and there is the option to block chat. There's also an option to block interaction and engagement and mute everyone in addition turn off your camera so as a presenter you can control audience engagement yes you want to encourage it but if there's some specific information that you want to get across like the community bot we saw earlier or you're listening to hands on how you could use OneDrive to your best ability then definitely you might want to use those options that you uh you can see in your meeting invites during your meeting right now, yes. um, I would uh, advise some uh, uh, etiquettes. Do let people know you're doing that in advance, just in case you know <laughs> they feel like it's broken and it's not. So these are some features in there. Microsoft does have a tooltip that says the meeting organizer has to press that. So it's clearly set that, but most people will see a disabled icon and call IT. And if I wanted to do that, I would go to the meetings options, uh, the meeting options in the meeting. Yeah. That's correct. Yep. You would go to yep. the meetings option. So we call it the ellipsis. There are three dots and you have a variety of options in there where you turn on many inclusive features, including uh, recording uh, captions. Uh, you've seen that before, but meeting options is the one very few people click. Uh, and it also controls, uh, you know, the most popular use of meeting options is when you book a meeting through Outlook or Teams, you want to control who can present. By default, depending on yep. your team's uh, setup, everyone can share their screen. It could be disruptive if somebody accidentally shares the screen on top of your presentation. So you, you want to control presenters. But furthermore, if you look down there, there are way more options than that uh, than than most people use, right? So hopefully yeah. those are some good use cases that would help you command attention. And and I think it's important to understand what's the purpose of your, your meeting. Um, I've actually attended a Teams uh, meeting from the Teams team. That's hard to say. Uh, it was a community meeting, and nobody but the presenters were expected to talk or to ask questions or to think, say things like that. But uh, the options were all left wide open. In the middle of someone doing a presentation, uh, someone went to the bathroom and flushed their toilet uh, and made all sorts of weird noises that were kind of embarrassing uh, because they didn't mute. They forgot to mute when they turn on, you know, they uh, uh, and the, the, the organizers didn't set anything. So here's the settings that Denzel's talking about here. Um, he's kind of going through quickly, but, um, you know, it's again, you control what type of meeting and not all settings are the same for every meeting because, you know, you've got different social settings. So again, you went there by going to the little ellipsis on the top. Yep. That's okay. right. So you click the little ellipsis at the top. Uh, let me zoom in that in for you. And then at, it's a variety of options. The one most frequently people do is maybe turn on their background effects, but do explore meeting options as a way to command attention. Okay. And mute, your, <laughs> mute your phone. <laughs> mute your phone. <laughs> Uh, okay, so there you um, go. yes, carry there's, on. There's another little thing, by the way. So what if you forgot to um, to mute people's microphone and someone starts, I don't know, uh, you know, say, ah, oh, this meeting sucks and uh, these presenters are really bad, and but they don't know that they're they're on, on mute, right? There's two options. One is you can stop everything, make it super awkward and say, oh, hello, can you turn off your microphone? The other option, Denzel, what would be the other way to do this that would allow you to level up 
So I don't have anyone in this meeting, but if I do have a participant, uh, let yeah. me see if I can get uh, the scrum bar in here. So the scrum bar is just a meeting room in my in my home. There you go. Okay, so we've got a participant. It's uh, of course it's just in my home, but the point in here is there are features on the. Uh, on the users, you could come in here. You could pin spotlight, remove them from ejecto seat. You could move yeah. them from the meeting, <laughs> uh, but definitely mute the participant. I'm, I've muted the system prior, so that's why it's grayed out. So you yeah. would be able to do that as well. Now, who can do this? The organizer, and and I believe if you're made a presenter, presenter, yeah, yeah. Um, also uh, coming soon to uh, teams near you is the ability to turn off a video as well. Correct. That's correct. So someone put forgets to put on their clothes before they join the meeting. Uh, you can quickly take care of that. All right. So this is about commanding attention, but let's talk about how you command attention as well, right? The one thing was to block um, external factors like chatting and emotions and other people flushing their toilet while you're trying to present. Um, but the other thing is to have a presence. And how do you have a presence? Well, you know, uh, there's a, a new movie out in the movie theaters right now. Um, and I don't know about you, but I would hate to watch a blurry movie. I would get really offended. And I'm going to tell you what the movie is. You have to guess. But I would be really <laughs> offended if I went to the movie theater and I, I watched the movie that looked super blurry. Um, I would want my money back. I wouldn't be enjoying myself and uh, all that stuff. So then what's the parallel to this when it comes to commanding a presence? Well, the first thing is about being seen, right? So um, what are some of the ways that you would want to be seen that <laughs> you're out of focus? <laughs> I missed the cue for the blur. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> no worries. But you want to be seen, that, and that actually is, is, is key. Like we talked about visual cues. So investing in uh, external web camera, now, you know, I do find that the computer cameras are sufficient, but a camera is as good as lighting. So it's not about just having that computer camera or an external, but it's also about having a lighting. So perhaps be in a well lit room, have the, you know, the light hit you at a 45 degree angle. So you're not ex overexposed out. Those are a few tips uh, that you can get from photography in placement. Yes, uh, shiny Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> um. The, the other thing too is, uh, again, if you're the presenter, turn on your camera, right? And again, welcome people to turn on their camera if the meeting setting uh, uh, or the, the whatever the, the environment uh, is conducive to do so. But the other thing too is um, when you have a chance, especially when you start the meeting, look directly at the camera, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, my presentation and my notes are right here, and if I, started talking to you like this um, in real life, it would be kind of disconcerting. It'd be like, stop looking at my boobs. Uh, my eyes are up here. So I look at the camera because that's the equivalent of, of your eyes. And here's now, the trick. I, yeah. I, would, I, I want to preface that. So I know it's not natural. So I so we have to pick up a digital skill here because humanly, you don't need to be told to look at someone unless you're my kid and you replied to me, you're looking somewhere else. Right, but if it's not that scenario and you are on a Teams meeting and you are trying to command attention and have this presence, it's important to just perhaps stare at the camera, make your point, and then go back to focus on the content you're speaking about. Stare at the camera. And so it takes a little bit of practice, but I guarantee you the results are there. The chat yeah. will be popping. There will be follow up questions. People will be interested because it literally provides that visual cue to them that you are there for them. A little trick that I use, by the way, is if I have to do a big, big presentation um, and I'm it's the first time I've done the presentation and I'm not sure I'll remember all the keywords or maybe I'm I'm being interviewed on a, like a TV interview or something like that where it's not material that I've prepared in advance. They're going to ask me some questions. What I'll do is I'll take sticky notes, right? Post-it notes and I'll post them all around my camera so that uh, when there are things that I want to remember to say, I'll actually be looking at my notes like I'm doing right now, 
but it looks like I'm looking at the camera. I'm just kind of looking around the camera a little bit and it kind of looks like I'm looking at you. So the more nervous you are, the more naturally you look at the camera and that's that's a great way to do this. All right, so we've talked about being seen. Let's talk about being heard, right? Uh, because your audio and, and your voice is probably kind of one of the most important things. Uh, Denzel, do you have some tips for being heard? Yes, so as you heard earlier when Hugo was speaking, say that again, Hugo, what were you saying? I was asking, I was about, asking echo. about echo. There you go. So how to avoid echo? I think uh, I, I've survived many echo meetings and a quick tip if you're trying to find the guy with or the gal with, uh, with the echo, look for the purple box. The person with the purple box not speaking is echoing out the meeting. What's happening is the speaker is too close to the mic. And it's like that wedding singer that's tipping close to the band and he gets really close to the get that sound. So really want to isolate sound. That's how recording artists does it. That's how music is produced. That's how we're having this call. We've isolated our mics and we've isolated what we hear. This prevents this mic to go back into the ear, which creates that effect. So invest in either a uh, low cost uh, alternative is a USB headset and perhaps something that would certify your experience is a Microsoft Teams certified headset from Jabra or Surface and or many other competitors like Blanktronics. You've seen them in call centers as well. So there's a reason we've been doing that and it's to provide the customer with a great experience on how you're speaking. So they, and they're heard as well and you're receiving that well as well. Yeah, and my and and it doesn't have to be an expensive microphone either. Like just a USB uh, mic or even a plugged-in mic, um, you know, is is better than anything. My son is kind of an active YouTuber, and I swear he's probably using like a, a microphone that he got in a McDonald's uh, Happy Meal. Uh, it works, right? He can mute himself and everything. The whole point is the microphone is close to your mouth. We're not hearing everything in the room. And if the neighbors start barking or the dogs start mowing the lawn, or maybe it's the other way around, um, you know, you won't hear that noise. And, and the people around you won't hear that noise. People in the meeting won't hear that noise. It allows them to focus. If you've ever been in a meeting where you had to strain uh, to actually listen to what the presenter was saying, um, uh, you, <laughs> you will, uh, you'll know what we're talking about. So this is about being heard. Now, what about hearing well? Right, because the two come hand in hand. That's right. That's right. So, well, you know, again, back to the isolation, right? So sometimes I've noticed folks use a uh, AirPod, right? Um, not the Bluetooth one, just the one that can listen. It's the one that's a headset, but the mic is that. And I'll tell you, we've done our studies. We've done a lot of call quality. That's actually not a great system setup. Stay away from a PC speaker is what we recommend. They work well, but it's not prime. No machine has been developed for video conferencing. Video conferencing thing became a huge thing in the pandemic. So a lot of these manufacturers don't actually have certified gear in them. They're good, just not certified. You might get away with Xbox, but you know, when you're getting on a, uh, a sales call, a marketing call, a technical call, you want to explain that problem. You want to be heard and you want to hear them well. So I would love to share that these headsets uh, are that are team certified. They actually provide an easy way to actually mute and unmute your mic without touching teams by just pulling down. And it's pretty much what Hugo is wearing, one of those uh, headsets in there. So great, great systems uh, in in uh, in using a certified headset. Awesome. All right, let's let's move on. I'm getting a reminder from my co-presenter that we're halfway through. Um, so we're doing okay. Before, I, I just like to level up here. So we so we talked about that camera. Yeah. Okay. All right. We talked about <laughs> that mic. Oh, we awesome. worked on this all night, right? <laughs> and we <laughs> talked about getting a certified headset. Okay. Hope you like Mario. That was Hugo's idea. All right. Let's get back in. Okay, so we're we're halfway there. Let's talk about presenting, right? Um, so presenting again, you have to remember that you're the presentation, but sometimes you have to convey information that will help kind of communicate your your intent and and get the change of behavior that we that you desire from your audience. 
Um, now, when I present, uh, Denzel, this is what I do. I don't know if you want to show my screen for a second, but this is what I do when I want to share PowerPoint, right? I'll actually take, uh, I'll open PowerPoint and I'll just kind of share my screen like this. And that's what it looks like. Um, now, there's a few problems with that. Right. The first thing is you can see everything that's going on on my desktop. Uh, you know, if there's any notifications or anything like that, uh, you'll see that. And it has happened to me in the past where I was presenting something and people were tweeting me and saying, you're doing great. This is awesome. And, you know, um, they're making fun of me and stuff like that. And all these chats are actually popping up on the screen as I'm presenting. But the other thing, too, is when you're doing it like this, right, you're you're not even bothering using the, the presenter mode in, in PowerPoint. Um, People can see all your slides, all your hidden notes. As you can see, we have our hidden notes here. People can see how many slides you have. They're like, oh my God, they have 45 slides. You know, they're only halfway through, whatever the, you know, it's not a good experience. Not to mention that it's hard, really hard to see all the content on the screen. So what would be a better way to do this, Denzel? I. Uh, you don't want that by PowerPoint, but there are convenient ways. So the anxiety I've noticed is starting to share desktop, window, PowerPoint, so many ways. But if you are focusing on PowerPoint, which is an amazing tool, by the way, and some cool features coming with it, there is a way in PowerPoint. And if you're in a Teams meeting, if you go to PowerPoint and I believe it's in slideshow, you would be able to just click a button and say present in Teams. That's the yeah, fastest it's on, it's way to do this. Right here. Yeah, and so what we're showing here is not an option in a Teams meeting, it's actually inside PowerPoint. It's not in Word, it's not in Excel or Excel, uh, but you know, <laughs> you definitely just uh, definitely just click present in Teams. And now it works only if you're in a meeting. So if you click it, otherwise there's no meeting. Yeah. It's not I just highlighted it on the screen. Right here. But, but that's for rookies, right? <laughs> you, want, you want to take that up a level, right? So what would be another way? <laughs> Let's check this out, all right. So. Have you seen these cool new features? Presenter mode. Right now, before Whoa. we go that far, uh, which is a great way to screen share, let's just take a look at a cool feature for folks who have been using PowerPoint. And I'm sure a lot of you guys may have heard of this before, but let me just show you what I'm doing with that, right? So first thing is first, I don't have my PowerPoint. It's missing. Where did it go? Typically, MRU, most recently used. You will see a list of most recently used PowerPoint files there. So that's how that works. I have none in here. It's a fresh client. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I want to browse OneDrive. I'm sure Hans loves this part. All right, so I'm going to browse in here. <laughs> I'm going to go into my governance folder that's badly named. I'm going to select this PowerPoint file and I'm going to click share. Awesome. And there we go, folks, live. I'm going to full screen this so what you see what are you Others would see, uh, we'll show that in a second. So the first thing is I don't have too many presenter notes, but if I had them, it would appear right here. Denzel uh, always knows what he's talking about, so he doesn't need presenter's notes. Um, I can't find the presenter's notes. That's why I never wrote it there, but now <laughs> that it's there, I should adopt it. Uh, it gives you all the cool tools as well. You got translation, you've got you know contrast, you can hide the presenter view, you can annotate, you can do all this really cool stuff at the bottom. So if you're a doodle, is that what it called? Doodler? Doodler, like, yeah. Oh, this is a cool tool. Like walk your customer, walk your technical support, walk your CEO, walk your CIO through a presentation with annotation. Take yeah. it to another level, right? Like that's what you want to do. So, but besides there's another, that. There's another cool thing, by the way, that I want to point out. If you have a tiny little laptop and you're trying to do a presentation, but you want to keep an eye on the chat, You'll notice how right now Denzel is presenting. Now we're not seeing the, the view that the attendees are seeing. We're seeing the view that the presenter is seeing. But you'll notice Denzel has his slide. He's got his notes, which are empty right now. He's got the list of slides that are available. But on the side, he's actually got the ability to have the chat as well if he wanted to. Right now he's just looking at the participants. But if there was a chat, it would actually show up in here, all in one tiny little screen. And there's another bonus feature. I'm stealing all your thunder there, Denzel, but if there's two people presenting and they're both made presenters on the on the Teams meeting and they're supposed to both be speaking at about the same slides, instead of saying next slide, please, next slide, please, uh, the other presenter can take over the sharing and they will now get this exact view that you see here. 
they'll be able to control the presentation. And then when they relinquish control and they give it back to you, you'll get that view back. So, all right, Denzel, I was, I was. No, that was a thing. great tip. That was a great tip, right? So just to, just to prevent people getting ahead of your cool stuff, uh, there's a prevent from moving. I would love Microsoft to develop this to allow only going back, but not forward. So that would be nice. Uh, so, um, but take it to another level, go boss mode, right? Let's do this. So I would stand out and appear over the slide. This takes a little bit of creativity in PowerPoint. You might want to position your slides in a certain way, but that these modes right now uh, in PowerPoint are limited to just this one spot. So, so plan content, uh, you know, appropriately. Great for big, big numbers, wins, mm -hmm. and things like that. Maybe not so good for a governance deck that's going to put people <laughs> to sleep. But if you present like a pro, you're going to get endurance, yep. right? <laughs> So I really love PowerPoint Live. It's a cool feature. Again, it allows somebody with a tablet, PC, a single display to get away from 45 displays and, and just be able to do that conveniently because the slideshow portion is what they see. And you're in presenter no, or the second window that opens up in PowerPoint. So what about if I want to share my screen in general, right? So instead of just sharing with PowerPoint, I want to do, do a demo. Or, or something like that. What would be some of the ways that I could do that? Okay, you want to be a ninja now. Or you want to share screens. Yes. Okay, so of course uh, you could share your screen and this is coming from Skype uh, and, and things like that, but let me show you a few more things that can be done with screen sharing that makes it like a boss, like you could just take it to another level and these features have just been announced, released on tech community. So hopefully you see that in your tenant in the coming week, if not by the end of the month. So let's take a look at this. So back to share, right? Our cool little share. The first thing you'll see at the very top are these presenter modes, right? So to give this demonstration, I'm gonna actually have to just switch the scene here. Here you go, if you don't mind. Right? Yep. So let's do this this way and let's get camera four going. Perfect. The reason I have to do this because it's a special pop out window that allows you to see what others see. So I can't do it the other way. Look, so let's get right into it. So I want to share my screen. And most of the time people, um, you know, have to kind of like focus on these boxes and do things and include computer sound as well, right? So let's just go back to Samsung so you could see include uh, computer sound and those presenter modes. Right, so let's say I want to share. I don't know what to share. I got a lot of things open, but let's just say I want to share one of my one of my displays. All right, I'm going to share. Uh, I'm going to share what I'm doing today. So let's see. We've got this screen. We've got this screen. I'm going to share the same screen that I'm using because I have one display. Let's go with that. Yeah. So let's, let's select that. Now, when you when you just do that, it's traditional screen sharing. Like nothing is special about this. It's just a red line indicates that that's the screen you don't see the red line but the red to. line does yeah. yeah the red line does indicate um you know let's see if you can see the red line now so you can see it right there the red line does yeah. indicate uh that's the monitor being shared so folks with 75 monitors look for the red line that's the one um but this cool thing is i forgot to add music now you did see that option earlier so it, it is available right at the top so you can include audio from your system but remember those presenter modes? I'm going to start to try use one of those overlays. So I'm going to click standard. And what's happened here is I am just like PowerPoint Live, I'm rendered over the screen share. So that's the screen being shared. That's what they see. So they see that's this cool. with, with that, right? And what's new uh, that's recently been announced is these new modes that allow you to set a specific background. You can select about eight or nine different backgrounds and have another one, which is basically like a reporter. You're listening to BBC One. So, yes. you know, um, so you could you you could make your presentations interesting. Just a tip for pros. If you are using PowerPoint on this way, make sure you have large fonts and large like, t t no, TMI, don't TMI it. Uh, just stick to the point, you know, and, and then if you if you want, you can always uh, during that screen share, go back to content focus mode, which would basically now focus on that. So that'd be like a cool trick, like, you know, how people switch scenes and 
and look differently. So let's just look that again. I'm going to stop presenting. It's going to go back to this method so you can zoom in. I'm going to click that share. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to show you that you could select a variety of backgrounds. So we'll select no, like me. No custom yet, right? Only not have yet, not yeah. yet. We're aspiring. So hopefully you could have your own custom photoshopped background. All right. So uh, and then you could go back and then you would now basically select one of those modes in advance and you would select that monitor. Right. So now you could see. Well, you don't see me do it because I'm going to yeah, switch side side. Yeah. There it is. So now there is a different background. I'm just going to double click for maximize. So that's what everyone looks at. This window is a separate window from what the screen you're being shared. So just a self preview if you just want to look at it that way. So plan to. <laughs> and the weather. Uh, so plan accordingly, and, and, you know, on how this works, right? All right, so we'll just uh, close the screen sharing. We'll come back here. Let's go to the ninja. You mentioned you mentioned sharing uh, audio, and I see this all the time. Um, people will say, "Oh, I, I forgot to turn on audio. Let me unshare. Let me reshare." No, no, no. Like, let's power this up, right? There is a way to actually share your audio, uh, whether it's a video or it's a uh, it's uh, well audio. Um, or maybe you're sharing an app that is making some noise and you want to share that as part of your presentation. And Denzel just showed it, but you just go to your sharing tray uh, at the top and you just toggle mm -hmm. the. Include sound. Yep. For folks uh, who are on the tech side of things, why do this? Microsoft is now supporting up to 30 frames per second. So if you, it is a YouTube video, it won't be, or I don't know what, what you're gonna call it. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, <laughs> it won't be like that, right? So it's going to be a lot smoother. So what happens in the technology? It detects a moving background and will start to burst it from three frames per second up to 26, 30 frames per second max at 1080p. So that's 3K short of a 4K TV. All right. All right. So we got like less than 15 minutes uh, or we got 15 minutes. We're going to start doing some rapid sharing uh, tips here. The first thing is about controlling the, the the focus right by using spotlight so maybe you have a whole bunch of people who are uh, sharing their video um and uh and maybe you're happy with that but you do want to focus on a central uh person or central series of people you don't want teams to randomly pick uh who's going to be presented thankfully there's a feature called spotlight and denzel you mind showing us that feature right there look at that so right. you went so that through the participants, it's right? It's the same place as the participants to mute uh, uh, them. Uh, it's the same thing. So the, the way I use this, uh, if you are having a meeting with two people doing a conversation about the deck, spotlight those two, right? right? And if you're going to use meeting options, let everyone know that you're turning off their cameras, right? And so it won't be turning on. So that will minimize their destruction. Uh, destruction uh, distraction so then so what then happens is you spotlight up to seven but you spotlight two people yourself and another person this will allow you this to be the largest two videos right it'll give everybody a good performance too, just receiving video right and and the main stage is the shared content so it's actually going to look really dynamic and depending on your size of your screen microsoft automatically does a netflix on you Right, so so that's how that works. So spotlighting is a great way. Now, if you don't have that, and it's not content sharing, and somebody's in a farm, uh, and then they go, uh, "Listen, take a look at these chickens." It was like a, a year ago. It was like finding the participant, someone you pin. So spotlighting is is a, is a better pin for everyone else. So think about a situation where you're on your phone, you're in a data center, you're on your phone, you're at the racetrack, and you want to share some sentiments about what you're seeing. A great way is to spotlight that. And then everyone sees that content, and then you can go back to presentation mode uh, and some of the other things we're doing. So those, hopefully those are some good tips. No, I want to understand what you meant by uh, teams doing a Netflix on you. Does that mean that at the end of your meeting, it takes you to the next meeting automatically and for the next several hours? And then some uh, says, are you still on meetings? No, you're not on auto meeting play or <laughs> that, would be, that would be jokes. Wait, you don't have to leave this one. It just starts the next one. <laughs> that would be right. hilarious. Um, so let's talk that. about incre <laughs> increasing engagement with meeting apps. 
There are cool Ooh, things yes. called meeting apps, right? Yeah. Look at that. So there are apps and there are meeting optimized apps. So if you go this method, you're going to find only apps that you know work. So I've optimized the meeting app that would control the lights in my home. It's a power app, so you can create power apps that can do that. You can add forms, and we talked about that earlier. Forms is a great way to keep things interesting. So I've just added a form, and what would happen up here is you would see an icon for forms, but if you go back to the actual window, right, you would be able to create these in advance. So you can do them while the meeting is happening. You can also do it before. I'd recommend adding the apps before, like book your meeting, don't send an attachment, put it yeah. in the meeting chat, right? Chat ahead of time, let them know this is the doc, add the polls and add to be a good presenter. So that way the attendee, he's gonna wanna come. He can get, he's got a lot of context. What I like about this is you can create the poll right from here, or you could go back to your desktop client, find the meeting, click the chat and look at the tab. But if you go this way, you will get a pop-up for choices or quizzes. So in this case, let's just do a poll. Uh, you know, in some, in, like I don't have it working for me, but look forward to pre, I was gonna say pre-paid, pre-templated uh, pre polls. So Microsoft will have pre-templated polls to rapidly put them to your meeting. So let's just say, uh, you know, uh, how you feeling today? Uh, you know, great, you know, not so great. <laughs> Uh, and you can allow multiple responses. You can keep them anonymous. I recommend anonymous for you know just to keep people's sentiments not in play. Uh, and you click save. Now, now that you've done that, what happens is it's not yet launching. And so, what happens in Teams? It will launch right inside of the content preview. So, if you're screen sharing and you've got, gone through a slide, launch a poll. Does that make sense? I agree. Get that engagement. So. As a presenter, use that as a way to get sentiments. We typically plan for three polls, like a starting poll, a mid poll, and the end poll, right? And this allows people to get something and ask for valuable feedback that helps you. So I'm going to launch this poll, and what's going to happen here uh, on the center? Oh, there will be there. Oh God, everything's going off at home. So <laughs> um, you, you just saw that immersive meeting experience overlaid so now it's not important about my content it's important that i have to interact with how i'm feeling so i'm going to say great because sps live is the um right and then we're going to just click done and now we have this uh poll in here i can go back i can go check it out and i can see how people were engaged or what those uh what feedback i was gathering and that's a great tip. Um, and you talked about having three polls, right? And uh, definitely Denzel and I would have actually used polls if this was not a, a Teams Live meeting. But here's an example, right? You're doing a session where you're introducing a new technology or a new feature. Start by polling the audience. Have you seen this feature or have you heard about this feature or have you used this feature? So that you can establish at the start that, you know, everybody knows about this because or maybe nobody's even heard about this, it helps you kind of change your conversation a little bit. And then at the end, you want something to gauge the impact, right? So, hey, are you planning on using this new feature I demoed today? Or, you know, what are you most excited about this new feature? Or whatever whatever you want to do. Yep. I, <laughs> um, you know, there's lots of cool things that you can do with that. But all right, let's talk about the next thing, though, because one of the things you want to do when you set, set up a meeting is you want to make sure that you are as inclusive and accessible as possible. So what's some of the quick tips that we have for that, Denzel? Okay, so when it comes to meetings, uh, as you can see, I'm on mute, so that's the quick tip that you are on mute, so remember to unmute your mic. But uh, let's just say I'm, I'm, I'm passively in this meeting, right? Meaning it's better that I hear this or read this or, or get this information in another way. So, and this happens when you're typically multitasking and you're not really in this meeting, but you're a fly on the wall. You could turn on some features that help you, you know, use that, but from an accessibility perspective, you can turn on live captions. So as you start speaking, and of course uh, my mic's muted, but let me just start speaking. So as I start speaking, it should start to, so Hugo, I should be able to capture you. Are you on mute? I am on mute, there you go. All right. 
it should there not actually go. capture him. It's just that I'm capturing his voice. But yeah. point is, it captures voice, and you could speak French, English, or other languages, and you could set the spoken language uh, in there. So if you're fluent in that language and they're speaking, or that way, you you would change this to your thing. Uh, whatever, cool. whichever one you want. Uh, in addition to that, you of course want to turn on. I like this one, transcription. So how about just like turning off incoming video because you're on an island with 1G connection and then you just start reading this like it's a, you know, uh, like a book. <laughs> it just yeah. starts writing your whole thing. This is this is borderline dictation. If you can't see that, let me just zoom into it. It's basically just typing everything out as I speak. You know, this is another way to get started with your Word document. You just basically talk to it. Uh, <laughs> And we've, like tested, we've tested this when you swear, it actually bleeps the words. We're not going to demonstrate it today, but uh, but yeah. it's a great accessibility Probably feature, right? You can swear word test if you yes. would like that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to zooming in, if you don't mind. Oh, my favorite. Okay, so in this demonstration, because I know it's hard for you guys to see, so I have to constantly zoom in, zoom out. Now, you don't have that. How, do you, how would you use this? So remember the browser? Remember how we would control and move the mouse back and forward? Did you know you could do that in a meeting? So I'm going to click on this window. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to start to roll it. And what would happen is it's resizing the client as I'm doing it. You could see just change on me. I'm going really tiny <laughs> and I'm going really big in a second. So this should be larger than life uh, like buttons. So that's another way to do it. Really control. Now, if you can't, if you, might not have that control button because IT is working on it. Uh, you know, you would definitely go to the top here, click the three dots, the ellipsis. For this, I will zoom. Uh, and then you can click that plus, and you can come in here and click that plus. Yeah. And you can click that plus, and then that would just bas basically make it much bigger now for everyone to see. That looks like it's applies. almost. Uh, that's yep. delicious. Wow. You coming? <laughs> uh, I think I got an appointment yes. there. I gotta go. I wanna go there. Uh, so. That also applies, let's say you're actually on a little tiny little uh, laptop and the presenter has this giant ultra wide monitor and they didn't realize that they're at like, uh, you know, uh, 16, uh, whatever, <laughs> trying to remember terms for I, 16K, right? Uh, so you can't see anything. You can actually focus, click on the content that's being shared and then zoom in using the same approach that Denzel showed. It's not going to zoom in your your Chrome. It's just going to zoom in on the content. So it allows you to focus and you don't have to be like, can you zoom in, please? All right, so let's talk about what happens after the meeting ends because it doesn't end where the meeting end, when the meeting ends, right? There's lots of cool stuff that you can do. Um, I love this part. Yes. Most productivity drops after the meeting. The purpose of the meeting was actually a moment in time where you needed to focus to, and come together, but you need to now break apart. So Teams does a great job by having used all the features we showed you today. If I was late, I shouldn't have been, but, but if I had missed it genuinely, the kids in the hospital, I could just go back, <laughs> watch a recording, read a transcription, and get access to the attendees, the roster, if you're a meeting organizer or a presenter, a lot more information becomes available to you. I can also then search for this information a week from now and, and you know, of course, be much more productive without having to email people. So document your the outcome of your meetings, right? You make a decision. Don't just agree to it in the chat like uh, or in, in, in the meeting itself. Actually write it in the chat so it's documented. And then let's take that to a whole new level, right? Let's because all we've talked about today was meetings that are scheduled and, and things like that. But you can actually uh, there's other ways to use Teams, right? If you think about the office uh, when we were back in the office physically, there was a water cooler or the coffee machine where you could just hang out, you could talk, and there's always this ability to just sp spontaneously start a chat with someone else uh, next to you or in the room or something like that. How do you do the same thing? In, yeah, I'm not sure what you're doing now. How do you do the same thing with uh, with Teams? Um, Denzel, I know you've done a few of these really cool uh, meetings. Do you mind talking to us? And that's going to be the last thing we'll we'll talk about before we wrap it up to for today. So uh, if I get your drift, you know, staying productive after that meeting is always a challenge. I would recommend the next thing you do is if everyone comes together is to go ahead 
and challenge yourself to create a Microsoft team and bring everybody together and move this meeting to a channel, create a community, get people involved, use emojis and make it exciting and inclusive for everyone to kind of collaborate. So take this whole collaboration to a whole new level. Awesome. Yeah, and this is by the way, when you schedule this, uh, make sure that you don't you you set up set it up so it doesn't book other people's calendars. So it's just one of those things that drop in. And in fact, Denzel and I did the exact same thing when we were uh, working on this presentation. We just kind of we had it open for like eight hours and we would just drop in and out. Denzel would just be the DJ for the meeting and he'd just play some music. Uh, it was a great way to collaborate and it was not um, it was the opposite of the meetings we started by describing in the start of this call. All right, so I, let's- I, I'll, end that, I'll, I'll just add one more to that. So guys, like, don't just look at meetings for the verb meetings. M meetings uh, is a technology. You meet for fun, you meet for work, you meet to collaborate, you meet to present, you meet to sell. To replace in the pandemic, we're asking if you would consider creating a reoccurring meeting with your comrades, with your friends, with your family. There's no obligation to join. There's no obligation to attend it. It's set to free. It doesn't block your calendar. What it does do, it provides that office-like feeling. So if you are able, you would just, you know, perhaps come to your desk and you'd be alone because you're home. You would join that meeting and maybe there's somebody on the other end. And maybe when you're coding away, if not documenting or presenting away, you're like, I don't know how to do that in PowerPoint. Your colleague heard that and your colleague would show you how using a screen share with the presenter mode and this is how they could do it. So try to use meetings in a much more fun way and keep it engaging, which will reduce the amount of fatigue or in disengagement that you receive in others. Awesome. Well, everyone, we'd like to thank you for joining this meeting. Um, you know, today we showed you how we can use the Teams feature to maximize your productivity in a meeting and really to be a hero. And I think that we should probably level up one more time, Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> we go. could do that. Yes, do that one more time. Let's level up all the way. What? <laughs> awesome. All right, so you can actually find us on Twitter and we put our Twitter LinkedIn earlier, but on uh, Twitter, you can find us at Bernie H and at M365 Advisor. I'm really jealous of your Twitter uh, handle, Denzel. Uh, thank you everyone for attending and uh, we look forward to seeing you in person. Awesome, Bye. see you guys on the next rebound. <laughs>